From a country music singer to a politician to a tiger daddy to a prisoner, the roller coaster life of Joe Exotic was never dull. Thanks to Tiger King, Joe is now a huge name in the big cat and animal rescue business. For better or for worse, money flowed in from hordes of tourists and from ongoing publicity. A lot of money. So how much is he actually worth? And how did he manage to blow it all? Let's find out. For those of you who haven't yet experienced the totally out there, wacky, and wild nature of Joe Exotic on the Netflix Tiger King series, we'll give you a quick rundown. His real name is Joseph Allen Maldonado Passage, but that doesn't quite have the same ring to it as Joe Exotic, and that's why he changed it, because even though he calls himself a Tiger Man, he's also a man of charisma and show business. Not necessarily in the good way, though. Originally from Kansas, Joe dabbled in everything from musician to business owner to policeman and politician. What he's most known for, however, is his zoo and the crazy, never-ending antics he got up to while running it. These days, he's serving his 22-year sentence behind bars for, well, we'll get to that later. While his ethics are controversial and many of his actions illegal, we can't deny his success when it comes to raking in the cash. Thanks to his zoo, the extensive media coverage, and the behind closed doors sales, Joe's racked up an estimated net worth of 10 to 15 million dollars, although it's not going to do much good behind bars. Before the docuseries Tiger King came out on March 20th, 2020, unless we'd made a personal visit to the GW Zoo or were invested in big cat culture, odds are that we'd probably never even heard of the name Joe Exotic. So this show, the one that capitulated him from peculiar local zookeeper to internationally famous criminal, what's it all about? Careful now, there could be a couple of spoilers. Well, the docuseries centers around Joe and his private zoo full of big, expensive cats. He's got tigers, lions, panthers, ligers, you name it. And if you've seen the series, then you'll know. He goes to some insane lengths to protect them and to salvage his exotic wildlife park, with his money flying in all kinds of different shady directions. As the series progresses, we see Joe spiral out of control, marry multiple times, run for president, and become more obsessed with violently squashing the competition that's this lady, Carol Baskin, than running his zoo properly. Before we get into his unique spending habits, let's rewind the clock. What inspired him? How did he end up running an exotic zoo and hand-feeding baby tiger cubs in the first place? It's not exactly the run-of-the-mill career for an outspoken, flamboyant, gun-toting cowboy with a mullet from Garden City. Ironically, after growing up on a farm, Joe spent his early career as a small-town Texas police officer. But it was when Joe started working at a pet store down in Arlington, Texas with his brother, Gerald, that things started to change. They had opened the business together back in 1986, with Gerald leading the way as the sibling with the love for wild animals. That particular store closed, and they opened another one nearby. However, in 1997, Gerald passed away. At that point, Joe found himself in a world of hurt and needed a change. He sold the pet store, but wanted to continue working with animals in order to honor his brother. That's what the GW stands for in Joe Zoo, Gerald Wayne, Exotic Animal Memorial Park. So, with close to $140,000 that his family had won in a lawsuit related to Gerald's passing, Joe made his first large purchase, the 16 acres of empty land right here, about an hour south of Oklahoma City, and the plot which, before too long, would become the coordinates for the now infamous GW Zoo. In addition to the money from the lawsuit, Joe was given $250,000 in a trust fund from his wealthy grandfather, so he had money to play with from day one. Before opening the zoo, Joe had been touring around with a mobile petting zoo. The revenue was good. Joe actually bragged that his mobile petting zoo once pulled in $23,697 in five days. And the feeling of working with animals was good, so he took it to the next level and bought that plot of land. After opening in 1999, by 2001, the zoo had already reported a total revenue of close to $120,000. Four years later, that number had grown to almost $540,000. He was making bank, and most of this cash came from donations, not entry fees. While he claimed that the zoo itself was non-profit, he made a good-sized chunk of money from his related for-profit ventures like The Gift Shop, which sold Joe Exotic branded skincare products, alcohol, and more. Joe's net worth also grew considerably by selling his tiger cubs, which he'd offload for about $2,000 per cat. And what did he do with all that money he was making? 
Well, he bought more exotic animals, of course. In its heyday, the zoo was home to over 50 species of animals and more than 200 big cats, including tigers, lions, pumas, and rare lion-tiger crossbreeds called ligers. Even though Joe was known for breeding a large proportion of the animals on site, he still needed to buy from other dealers from time to time. There is basically no government regulation to the big cat industry, apart from the fact that it's illegal to buy and sell them. With that in mind, definitive records of how much Joe paid for his animals are hard to come by. But judging by Joe's own estimate of two grand per cat, we can easily infer that he forked out hundreds of thousands of dollars for a variety of exotic beasts over the years. With an ever-expanding collection of animals, you would expect Joe to be constantly shoveling cash into food and maintenance costs. But that wasn't quite the case. In reality, Joe's overheads were relatively small. His employees weren't paid that much, and he kept his tigers fed using roadkill and discarded meat from nearby grocery stores. According to Joe, this method still set him back about three grand a year for each tiger, close to $600,000 per year in total when accounting for all of the animals. But the truth is, most of his money didn't go to tiger food or operating costs. It went to legal fees. Back in 2006, the Department of Agriculture suspended Joe's license for two weeks and fined him $25,000 for a long list of violations, including failing to provide adequate care and failing to properly clean animal enclosures. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. As we know, Joe spent years embroiled in legal drama with Carol Baskin, the owner of Big Cat Rescue in Florida drama that escalated tenfold as the years went on. At one of the many points when the tension between the two could be cut with a knife back in 2013, Joe was ordered to pay Big Cat Rescue $1 million in damages. Why? Because after a number of taunting videos on social media, including destroying mannequins and blow-up dolls dressed as Carol, Joe officially changed his company's name to Big Cat Rescue Entertainment, hoping to steal Baskin's web traffic. Carol and her husband fought back, suing Joe in 2011 for copyright infringement. That's additional to the almost three-quarter of a million dollars that he had spent on lawyers before that point to keep her accusations hush-hush. Once paid up, Joe Exotic had no choice but to declare bankruptcy. For Joe, it quickly got to a point where it was just as much about ego, belittling Carol Baskin and coming out on top than it was about the actual conservation of big cats. He spent plenty of money creating out there social media videos. If you thought you'd seen it all, wait until you hear what his money went toward in 2016. Ready? In 2016, Joe Exotic submitted himself as an independent candidate in the 2016 election for President of the United States. He received 962 votes nationwide. Two years later, he went for round two, gunning for governor of Oklahoma in 2018 under the Libertarian Party. With a campaign bill likely reaching tens of thousands of dollars, Joe made t-shirts, posters, rode on floats and parades, constructed awareness videos, and all the way through, continued to throw shade at Carol Baskin. Despite his spending, Joe came last out of three candidates with just 664 votes. Those votes, however, represented a whopping 18.7% of the total count. Joe Exotic never hid his sexuality, nor did he hide the fact that he was involved with multiple partners. The first of his two current legal husbands was Travis Maldonado, who arrived at the zoo in December of 2014, and the second, Dylan Passage. But those are only the current partners. Even though Travis is no longer with us, Joe kept his name. And over the years, Joe was married to five different people, including John Finlay and Travis Maldonado at the same time. One wedding doesn't come cheap. And with that said, neither do five. Now, we've said that Joe's overhead costs weren't excessive, but that doesn't mean that they didn't exist. He still paid his employees a wage. And while it wasn't anything to write home about, at just 150 bucks a week, he also provided them with room and board. If we add up the associated rent costs, keeping the likes of Saf, Cowie, and John Ranke on hand would have added up to $1,000 a month each at least. Carol Baskin, on the other hand, used a complex volunteer system. So while some condemn Joe's measly payments, he maintains that his something was better than Carol Baskin's nothing. The final straw with Carol Baskin was the one that got Joe sent to jail. According to Saf, quote, Carol was the first thing on his mind every morning and the last thing on his mind every night, end quote. So, spoiler alert, to end the long-lasting feud once and for all, Joe had organized to hire a hitman to take her down. And for this, he forked out $3,000 in cold, hard cash. Although that number would soar once he was arrested, forced to pay for more legal representation, which at the end of the day still wasn't even enough to prove his innocence. 
It's clearly been a wild ride for Joe, and if you've seen the series, you'll agree if it were up to him, the ride wouldn't be done just yet. But there's nothing he can do for the moment. At the time the documentary aired in 2020, Joe was serving 22 years in prison, found guilty in 2019 for paying a man to eliminate the Big Cat Rescue founder, amongst a long, long list of other animal-related charges. As of March 2020, GW Zoo is now closed, and we'll have to wait for Joe to get out to see what he's got in store next. So have you seen the show? Well then tell us in the comments, which side are you on, Carol's or Joe's? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and thanks for checking out The Richest. See you next time.